Hello and welcome to another edition of the Gadget Show Web TV. We're at Grand Designs Live in London. It's Britain's biggest exhibition celebrating everything to do with the home, including quite a bit of technology. Excruciatingly expensive. Obviously quite a lot of the stuff at the show involves things like light fittings, building materials and soft furnishings, but there's quite a bit of gadgetry too, not least on the House of the Future stand. This is a chair where all the springing's done by magnetism, there's no actual hard contact between my seat and the frame of the chair. It's just the opposing power of magnets. Now, I think one of the most impressive visions in this house of the future is this, a vertical bathroom. Bathroom design hasn't changed much over the years, but this is truly revolutionary. It doesn't take up much more space than a conventional bathroom overall, but it's everything you need is contained in here. There's a shower head up here, a nice big one, and a second shower head, so uh, two of you can shower together. This is just a prototype on the real thing. There'll be a... Um, an HD TV screen and mirror and various electrical points here. Storage space, now that's very important. There are two storage cabinets. I don't know, our bathroom is always full of shampoo bottles and other sort of debris that the children obviously have left around. There's a basin here with controls for the shower that you can reach in underneath to access. And that slides out of the way to reveal the very important lavatory here. And every part of this thing has been used because under here is the loo brush and the vitally important bog rolls, you'll never run out because they're in here. Brilliant thing. And there's a high-tech bedroom as well, incorporating a TV that rises up automatically from the end of the bed, and a 360-degree speaker that gives you surround sound from just one source. There's also Sony's entry into the e-book market. Their portable reader system can contain up to 160 books worth of information, and you can add to that even more through the two memory card slots in the top. They're promoting its very good battery life. Apparently, you only need to charge it every six months. They can do that because it only uses energy when you're slipping through the pages. The controls are laid out so that they mimic the positions where your hands would be when you're holding a normal book. So you can slip through the pages from there, down here, or down here. You can even store MP3 files on it or PDF documents. So it's a lot handier than carrying around a suitcase full of books on holiday. This is the D-Box chair, which is essentially a large sort of cinema-style chair, but with three motors built into it. What happens is that when a new movie comes out, and so far they've got 750 on their database, programmers at D-Box put in lots of instructions so that the motors in the chair move about in sympathy with actions in the film. They know how to do this because when you put your DVD into your player or your Blu-ray disc, it's actually linked to a bit of D-Box electronics in the cupboard that recognise what film it is and uh, it's probably downloaded you some instructions from the internet to tell the chair what to do. The movie we've got here is a new Disney movie called National Treasure Book of Secrets and actually Disney are actually going to put little logos on the box if their film has been de-boxed. Now, there should be a car chase coming up so there should be plenty of action, plenty of chair movement. That was very good impact, that was very good. Crashing into a bus, sideswiping it with your Mercedes is replicated very well. I think it's most effective where you're actually in the action, where the action's happening to you in the film. I think it's slightly more puzzling when it's happening to third party action you're looking at. You're not, it doesn't necessarily seem quite so relevant. This is the movie version of the chair, but there's also a new gaming version, which I'm going to look at now. 
This RP200 chair works on the same principles as the movie D-Box, but obviously with games. Currently it works with PC games. This one's uh, wired up to uh, a racing game. I'm driving around Silverstone rather slowly, as you can see. Um, you can also use it with Microsoft's Flight Simulator, in which case obviously you have to swap the controls for something more appropriate. Oh dear, I've left the track completely, as you can see. Ah! Certainly throws you about quite a bit. You get that uh, sense of the car rising on acceleration, which is good. A bit of a sense of lateral force. If anything, the movement's rather exaggerated. Feels as though your steering rack is loose, rather. As though you're driving an old Cortina that's failed its MOT, but equipped with an extremely powerful engine. It's clearly a more active application than the movie chair, and actually, I like it better. So there's quite a bit of interesting gadgetry at a home show. What a surprise, but the one thing that's gonna stick with me is that innovative bathroom. 